In this lecture, we'll look at the bandit feedback version of the problem. So as usual, this is supported in part by NSF award CCF 1749864. Okay, so recall the setting. So in this setting, the algorithm only gets to see the feedback corresponding to the arm it chose. So in particular at time step t, if the algorithm chose the arm at, then the feedback it sees is ft of at. So it doesn't get to see ft of other arms it did choose. So as we saw, the doubling trick helps us relax the assumptions on payoff range and time horizon being unknown. So henceforth, we'll uh, fix these assumptions and uh, worry about the setting where the algorithm knows the payoff range and it's between zero and one and the time horizon t, which is again known to the algorithm. So the doubling trick extends to even all the algorithms we see so far and therefore this is without loss of generality. Okay, so what is the additional challenge we have compared to uh, what we had for the full feedback? So the additional challenge here is going to be this uh, explore exploit trade-off. So what does this mean? So the algorithm has to kind of uh, explore or play every arm sufficiently enough to get enough feedback about an arm. So in particular, if it doesn't play an arm, it will never see a feedback corresponding to it. So it needs to play enough times, each arm to be played enough times to get feedback about them. But on the other hand, uh, it also needs to stick with the best arm it has seen so far. So it has to play the best arm sufficiently many times and also play other arms enough times to gain feedback. And the key challenge is going to be how to trade off both these uh, aspects at every time step. And for this uh, lecture, we are going to be seeing a particular algorithm that gives the optimal bound in the bandit feedback setting. And this algorithm is called the EXP3 algorithm. And this is due to Euler et al. from 2002. So when I mean optimally, I'm going to put optimally under quotes. We'll see why. So exp3 by itself uh, solves optimally only in a certain sense. And then we'll have to modify this algorithm to get uh, optimal optimality in the true sense. I will leave this discussion for the later part of this video. OK, so what is the intuition behind this algorithm, right? So we know if we receive the full feedback at every time step, we have an optimal algorithm called H, right? So somehow if we can use H as a black box, uh, but by giving it feedback for actions you didn't choose, then we may be able to do something. So the main idea of exp3 is to do that. So it, it'll every time it receives a feedback ft of at, it instead constructs a fake reward, which is reward for other arms it didn't choose. And it gives this uh, vector feedback as to the hedge algorithm. So the hedge receives a set of fake rewards, which depends only on ft of at. So this handles the exploitation part. So since hedge, uh, if it gets the full feedback, it knows how to exploit the best arm. So hedge will do it. So to handle exploration, what exp3 does is to also mix this with uniform exploration. So what it means is that at every time step with a small probability, it simply chooses an arm uniformly at random. So that uh, this will make sure you're exploring, playing every arm sufficiently many times. And with the remaining probability, it will just do whatever hedge asks it to do. So this is the intuitive idea behind it. So it's like fairly, uh, it fairly builds on hedge as a black box with this additional idea of exploration and constructing fake rewards. Okay, so let's see formally how this algorithm looks like. So the algorithm takes in a param exploration parameter gamma. So it takes in an exploration parameter gamma that lies between zero and half. Okay, so given this exploration parameter gamma, so the exp3 algorithm is as follows. So in each time step t, we invoke hedge to obtain an action ht. So invoke hedge, hedge returns an action ht, we'll have ht. Additionally, you also flip a, a Bernoulli random variable xt with such that its mean is gamma, right? So you, you take a random variable xt, which is Bernoulli. So meaning it either takes zero or one and the probability that it takes one is gamma, okay? So we do this and then what do we do? So if xt turns out to be one, then we choose a un action uniformly at random. So if xt was one, it, you choose an action uniformly at random. So the probability that xt is going to be one is it gamma. So with probability gamma, you're going to choose an arm uniformly at random. And with the remaining probability one minus gamma, you're going to just choose whatever h gave you, which is ht, right? So the, the algorithm is simple. So it's, it just implements whatever we just saw intuitively. And the probability 
with which it's going to do uniform exploration is this exploration parameter gamma. And then finally, once you played the action AT, either, either, in, either in this step or in this step, and then uh, you have to construct feedback to the hedge. So we construct a fake payoff vector FT tilde, which depends only on the action FT of AT. So in the next few videos, we'll see how to do this exactly. But for now, uh, it's a black box. Some black box algorithm will take FT of AT as input and gives you back FT tilde. So we give back FT tilde as the feedback to hedge. So hedge needs a feedback, so it takes FT tilde, and then hedge just does the multiplicative weight update to itself. And uh, for the next 10 step, it's ready to give another action. Okay, so it's a fairly uh, modular algorithm. So for, to construct this fake payoff, we'll assume uh, two things. So first we'll assume that this black box has FT of AT. And we'll also assume that it knows the distribution PT from which uh, from which hedge chose HT, right? So HT is usually cho is chosen from uh, PT, and then we know what the distribution PT as well. So we'll make this assumption, which is a natural assumption, and then uh, we'll see how to construct this payoff. Okay. So constructing fake rewards. How do we do that? So what we want in the fake reward is we want this property called an unbiased estimator. So what we want is that we want an unbiased estimate of FT of A for every action A. So what does it mean unbiased? So we look, so the algorithm is a randomized algorithm and over the randomness of this algorithm in expectation, whatever you choose to give FT of FT tilde of A, that should be equal to FT of A. More formally, so let's say the actions A1, A2 up till AT minus one uh, chosen in the previous T minus one time steps is fixed. So in this conditional space, so for a given realization of A1, A2 up till AT minus one, you want the following. So you want the fact that the expected value of the fake reward FT tilde of A, given the given uh, A1, A2 up till AT minus one should be FT of A for every action A in K. Okay, so in this conditional space, the expected value of FT tilde of A should be equal to FT of A. So this is the unbiased property. So this is the unbiased estimate property. So I haven't told you how to implement this, but we want to, so this is, this is our goal. Our goal is to construct an estimator that satisfies this for every action at every time step. And how do we do that? So uh, this is, coming so this is a kind of a well-known property or a well-known uh, black box which we want and it's been studied in statistics or originally studied in statistics and since then been used in like various other fields and this is what is called as the inverse propensity scoring estimator or ips estimator in short and uh, it it tells us how do we construct such an uh, such an estimate and it's it's fairly uh, fairly natural so uh, it's it's kind of been reinvented in many many areas and for instance being used commonly in like many randomized algorithms so the way we do it is as follows let me denote qt of a to be the probability that your algorithm will choose at equal to a given a1 a2 and at minus 1 so fix a1 to at the actions a1 a2 up till at minus 1 what is the probability that the action you choose at time step t is equal to a so that is the definition of qt of a so note that QT of A is a, a distribution over your actions, right? So suppose you know how to how to compute QT of A, then the estimator says that this is how you construct an unbiased estimate. So let FT tilde of A be defined as follows. So FT tilde of A is FT of A by QT of A if the action you chose at time step T equal to A, right? And it's zero otherwise. So note that to construct this estimate, all you need is FT of AT because FT of AT is all that is being used. You need to know FT of AT and you need to know QT of AT. So you need to know FT of AT and QT of AT. So if you know how to compute both of these, then FT tilde of A is uh, well determined, right? So if the action you chose at AT equal to A, then it's FT of A by QT of A and it's zero otherwise. So this is how you construct uh, the IPS estimates, which gives an unbiased estimate. So just so that we understand how it's constructed, let me take a very simple example. So look at some time step T. 
and let uh, the following be the feedback vector. So let's say we have three arms, A1, A2, A3. And uh, the feedback Ft uh, of a, a, a equal to 1 is 0.4, Ft of A equal to 2 is 0.7, and Ft of A equal to 3 is 0.3. Okay, so let's look at this stylized example. And then let's say this is how the probability of playing each arm Qt is. So Qt of A1 is 0.5, Qt of A2 is 0.3, and Qt of A3 is 0.2. So note that this sums to 1. So Qt is a distribution over your arms. Okay, so now let's see how do you construct the estimator. So if the realized arm was A1, right? So the realized arm was A1, then the hedge feedback would be uh, Ft of A1, which is 0.4, divided by Qt of A1, which is 0.5. So it's 0.4 by 0.5 for uh, A equal to 1, and it's 0 for the other two arms. So this is how Ft tilde would look like. Right, so it's just depending on Ft of A equal to 1 and Qt of A equal to 1. So likewise, if the realized arm was A2 instead, then it will be 0 on A1, A equal to 1 and A equal to 3. And A, uh, A equal to 2, Ft tilde of T would be just Ft of A equal to 2, which is 0.7, divided by Qt of A equal to 2, which is 0.3. And likewise, when A equal to 3, for A1 and A2, it's 0. And for A3, it is Ft of A equal to 3, which is 0.3 divided by Ft or Qt of A equal to 3, which is 0 0.2. So this is going to be Ft tilde of T, right? So this is Ft tilde of, of T if A equal to 3 is the realization, and this is going to be Ft tilde of 2. Okay, so now we understand how this estimator works. So let's look at uh, how do we compute Qt of A, right? So here, I, here we assume the fact that Qt is given to us. So let's see how does the algorithm compute this. So recall from definition, Qt of A is probability that AT equal to A given A1, A2 to AT minus 1. So given actions A1 to AT minus 1, what is the probability at time step T? You will choose it to be equal to A. So for our setting, this has a closed form expression. Uh, and let's see how, how, how is this closed form expression obtained. So note that the I, I said we make the assumption that hedge uh, gives a dis chooses a distribution Pt over arms and then samples Ht from Pt, right? So this is Ht from Pt. So this is how hedge gives you the action Ht. And recall that Pt is a is a vector which depends on the only on the feedbacks f1 tilde, f2 tilde up till Ft minus 1 tilde. So if I give you these feedback vectors, Pt is a deterministic vector. And moreover, each of these f1 tilde, f2 tilde just depends on the actions a1, a2 up till at minus 1, right? So if I give you a1, a2, and at minus 1 and the corresponding feedback, then f1 tilde, f2 tilde up till ft minus 1 tilde is deterministic, and therefore pt is deterministic, okay? So then in this conditional space, so if, I, if we fix actions a1, a2 up till at minus 1, what is the probability that uh, you would choose a particular arm a, right? It's going to be with probability 1 minus gamma. You're going to choose whatever is given by hedge. And the probability that the hedge will say play action A is going to be Pt of A in this conditional space. So with probability 1 minus gamma, you would choose Pt of A. And with remaining probability gamma, you will choose an action uniformly at random. What is the probability that that action is going to be A is going to be 1 over K, right? So therefore, Qt of A is going to be gamma times 1 over K, which is obtained from uniform exploration. This is obtained from uniform exploration. And with probability 1 minus gamma, it's going to give the value given by hedge. So this is the value from hedge. OK, and so this is the probability with which you will play action A, uh, AT equal to A, given actions A1 to AT minus 1. So therefore, QT of A is just this expression here for every action A. So now we are in good shape. So we know how to compute Qt of A and therefore we know how to compute F1 tilde, F2 tilde and so on for each time step. Okay, so now let us verify the unbiasedness property. Let's see uh, whether this is an unbiased estimate. So recall that we want to show that this expected value of Ft tilde of A given A1, A2 up till AT minus 1 is equal to Ft of A for every action A. For all action in K, you want to show this for the following property. So start with the LHS, right? Start with the LHS. So with probability Qt of A, Ft tilde of A is going to be Ft of A divided by Qt of A. 
and with the remaining probability it's just going to be zero right so that is the definition of how ft tilde of a was set so if we take expectation so expected value of ft tilde of a is just qt of a times ft of a by qt of a plus one minus qt of a times zero which is just qt of a times ft of a by qt of a which is equal to ft of a right the qt of a cancels and this is equal to ft of a so here i made a, a, an assumption so i made an assumption that uh, qt of a is strictly greater than zero so otherwise uh, uh, ft tilde of a is not well defined so we made this assumption and uh, this assumption is going to be true as long as gamma is strictly greater than zero so notice that the first term here is gre strictly greater than zero as long as gamma is strictly greater than zero and therefore uh, since the input parameter gamma is strictly greater than zero so this assumption holds true for us so we are in good shape therefore uh, this ips estimate is an unbiased estimate and it gives us the property reward so let's go going back to the exp3 algorithm so we invoke hedge uh, which gives us an action ht with probability gamma you choose an action uniformly at random with remaining probability you choose the action given by ht then you construct the fake payoff vector ft tilde which depends on ft of at and this is going to be using the ips estimates we just saw using ips estimates and then give ft tilde of uh, as the feedback vector to hedge so this describes the complete algorithm okay so let's see now what uh, kind of regret bounds we get right so let's as usual fix a star to be uh, to be the best action in hindsight that is if all feedback vectors were known a priori then what is the best action you would play to get the maximum payoff then uh, we have the following uh, theorem so the theorem states that from time step 1 to t the cumulative feedback ft of a star minus the expected value of uh, the payoff t equal to 1 to t ft of at so this expectation is over the randomness of the algorithm over internal randomness of algorithm so in expectation this difference is at most square root kt log kt right so this is what we will aim to prove so first notice that already we are uh, doing slightly bad in terms of k so in, in the full feedback setting recall that the the regret bound depended on the number of actions k as square root log of k instead uh, you get square root k here and this is sometimes called the price of bandit feedback so because you're not seeing the full feedback this is the price you have to pay in, in the regret between the number of actions and so the square root k is optimal the dependence on the number of actions and the second thing to note which is kind of more critical is that this regret bound here is kind of cheating in the sense that we are not really proving what we aim to prove because we are only proving it in expectation so it's a slightly weaker statement and this is sometimes what is called as pseudo regret in the online learning literature so sometimes you just settle for pseudo regret because that's all you can prove and in case of exp3 uh, this regret board holds only for the pseudo regret which is the expected uh, in, which is the total feedback obtained by exp3 in expectation but on the plus side this works against an adaptive adversary because hedge works against an adaptive adversary and uh, all the operations we are doing uh, does not kind of uh, does not hurt like i mean an it still works against an adaptive adversary so that is the positive here but the negative is that this is a weaker regret bond against pseudo or what is called as pseudo regret so i will i will make a couple of comments on this uh, this algorithm firstly uh, recall that uh, the dependence on total time horizon t in case of hedge and here is as uh, grows as square root t uh, we will show that this is dependence is optimal in a later lecture so we'll prove lower bounds on the uh, best regret any algorithm can get and it turns out that square root t is the best you can do and this is an unconditional lower bound that is information theoretically this is you have to incur square root t regret and so you might ask okay so can we do anything to get rid of this pseudo regret assumption 
In, indeed, we can. So, we will look at another algorithm called exp3.p, uh, where dot p rep refers to probability or high probability. And he, there we will show that, in fact, you can get the same kind of regret bound, which is square root kt log kt with high probability on the realized uh, realized set of action. And you're, in particular, the regret is bounded by square root kt log kt. But you, I'll, you, in the analysis, we'll also, I'll also show that or maybe leave it as an exercise where we show that you do, you can still bound the true regret of exp3 algorithm, except that it will turn out to be a suboptimal bound. So we won't get square root t, we'll instead get something like t to the 3 fourth, but we can still bound the, bound the true regret of exp3. And as we'll see later, the reason why you are, while bounding the true regret, you're going to uh, lose optimality is because the IPS estimate has high variance. And we'll uh, come discuss this during the analysis. And that high variance is what makes you lose uh, lose your uh, re optimal regret guarantee. So we'll I will see this during the analysis. And uh, after giving some sufficient hints, I will leave the actual derivation as an exercise in that lecture. So with that, uh, we'll conclude this lecture. And in the next lecture, we'll try to analyze exp3 and in particular uh, prove this theorem. Uh, on the pseudo regret.